Hey, what's up guys, Jace Two Cents, and we're gonna have a basic chat, just you and me. Just all 392,000 of you and one of me. We're gonna talk, now don't all talk at once, for the love of God, please don't do that. EVGA approached me and asked if I wanted to do a review of their brand new GTX 980 Ti Kingpin Edition, and I said sure. But before I do that, there's a video I have to make before this review makes any sense. And that was the fact that I am going to talk about ASIC quality, what it means, why it matters, should it matter, and should you even care. Whether you're looking for a pump, reservoir, custom GPU block, or a complete loop in a box, AlphaCool's wide range of products can make your next water cooling adventure an easy one. Click the link in the description for more details. Now the reason why I'm going to do that, and I told them I was going to do that before I did this review, is because EVGA is doing something that I don't think any other manufacturer has done up until now, which is binning that particular GPU price point based on ASIC quality. Now that's got a lot of people really confused, a lot of people don't know what it means, and if you do a simple Google search, typically all you find are forums, tons and tons of people arguing with each other about what it really means and why it matters. So today I'm going to give you my opinion about it which I'm going to try and load it with as much facts as possible and keep as little opinion out as, or as much opinion out as possible. But uh, t at the end of the video, hopefully you can determine whether or not it's something you should even care about. Okay, so ASIC quality. What does ASIC stand for? And we're not talking about the shoes here. We're talking about ASIC, A-S-I-C, or Application Specific Integrated Circuit. Basically, anything with any sort of a processor in it, whether it be big, small, or if not, it uh, basically is an, is an ASIC. It is an application specific, in this case, a graphics processor unit, or a CPU being a CPU, or a microprocessor inside of a TV, or hell, even if you have a smart toaster, it could have an ASIC quality. Basically, it means it is a specific application with an integrated circuit. So if it's electronic, it applies with ASIC. But people get really caught up on that simply because of the fact that GPU quality and ASIC quality over the last couple of years has been something that's been on people's minds because GPU-Z, which is a program that will tell you all about your GPU, included a little button that lets you scan your ASIC quality and it will tell you exactly what your quality is. Now that's got people kind of freaked out, like, oh my god, mine's only 58%, what does that mean? And other folks are going, haha, I've got a 79% ASIC quality, so clearly my GPU is superior. <sighs> It's one of those things where, unfortunately, the internet, being the internet, is full of misinformation. So today we're going to try and do the best we can to iron some of this out so you guys can understand the review that I'm going to do soon about this card, because inevitably there's going to be tons of questions about the ASIC quality. Now GPUs and CPUs and anything with a processor is made out of a silicon wafer, which is basically really fine sand. I know it's a little bit more complex than that. But anyway, it's a very intricate piece of uh, material that gets cut up into lots of little pieces. It's one big circle that gets cut into a ton of little circles, and those little circles become your GPU die, or your CPU die, or whatever. And each one of those have imperfections. There is no such thing as a perfect silicon wafer, and all of them have different unique imperfections, kind of like fingerprints. So what happens is you're gonna have varying qualities of perfection. Now ASIC quality is not applying to the entire GPU, and that seems to be what gets people freaked out. They think the entire graphics processing unit, which is made up of a die, it's made up of traces, it's made up of VRAM, VRAM chips, or HBM now. Uh, you've got your VRMs in there, you've got your chokes, capacitors, you've got a lot going on in this thing. Now the entire package here is called a GPU. But the only thing ASIC quality really applies to is the die or the silicon that makes up the actual processing unit inside the core of the GPU. So don't think ASIC quality means that your GPU as a whole is going to overclock better. That's myth number one we've got to throw right out the window. Now ASIC quality basically is saying that the die itself is performing at a certain percentage level of what would be considered perfect. Now we already know there's no such thing as perfect wafer because I already said that. And this is on the internet so it has to be true. Now every time a wafer is cut into those tiny little dies that make their ways into our GPUs, they are given an ASIC value. Now that value tends to freak people out because if you look up the basic definition of ASIC quality, it's gonna tell you a, a percentage of performance based on what's considered ideal. Now does that mean that if you have a 75% ASIC quality in your GPU that you're only getting 75% of the performance that you should get out of that GPU? Absolutely not. Because obviously as these things are manufactured, they are going to be 
their performance values for the GPUs are gonna be placed well below where 100% would be. Because as I said, there's no such thing as 100% perfect piece of silicon. Now we're gonna take the focus simply onto GPUs because as I said, GPU-Z is what caused all of this discussion in the first place. Now that number, that percentage number does not mean percentage of performance in terms of overclocking. Not at all. People seem to think if they have a higher ASIC quality graphics card, that that means they have much more overclocking headroom, or they're gonna overclock better than say a card that's at 65% or 71%. That's not the case. And that's the confusion I think a lot of people have with EVGA's ASIC binning, thinking that, oh, well, the 80% plus is gonna clearly overclock better. Not at all. The only thing you really need to be concerned with with ASIC quality on GPUs is the fact that it's gonna have to do with temperatures and voltages. They're all gonna pretty much achieve right around the same core clock. In fact, an 80% plus uh, may not even overclock as far as something that's say a 70% plus because there's more factors involved with this. Now, I don't know exactly why EVGA did the ASIC binning process. I'm fairly certain it has nothing to do with overclocking potential because they also know that ASIC quality has nothing to do with overclocking. It has to do with the efficiency of the GPU because a card that has a higher ASIC quality is gonna achieve the same clocks as one that has a lower ASIC quality at much lower voltages because you're gonna have less voltage leaking. Lower ASIC quality GPUs tend to have more voltage leaks, which means that you're gonna to have to bump up the voltage higher to achieve the same level of performance as a card that has a higher ASIC quality. That does not mean they're gonna overclock farther at all. In fact, if you have a high ASIC quality card, most of the time it's better to do your overclocking and leaving the voltages stock because if you bump up that voltage, even small increments, it tends to freak out the core a little bit more because it's getting a lot more voltage bump than say a card that has a lower voltage or lower ASIC quality. Now I don't know that may not make a whole lot of sense, especially when you'll hear things like, things that are 70% plus are better for air cooling and things that are under 70% plus are better for water cooling. Now is that to say that you shouldn't water cool an ASIC card that's above 70%? Absolutely not. You're still going to get even better temperatures on water cooling a card above 70, considering the fact that it's going to be using less voltage. So the benefits of getting a card with a higher ASIC quality is gonna come all the way down pretty much to efficiency and temperatures. Lower voltages required on your GPUs, especially if you have multiples of them, it's gonna be easier on your power supply unit, it's gonna be easier on your system with less temperature, and it's gonna be easier on the core itself and the air cooler built onto the card because there's gonna be less voltage and heat and TDP to have to dis dissipate when it comes to that cooler. Now I think the only caveat to what I've said though is that Vince, AKA Kingpin, the guy who, you know, actually his name's on the card and all, would say that when it comes to LN2 overclocking and super high voltages, then ASIC quality matters more. And that might be true because as you bump up higher voltages, the more leaks there are, the more bleed over and frequency talk there's gonna be across componentry, which can definitely affect the max overclocks. So if you were going for a super high overclock, like two volts or 2.1 volts, or however far he's taken his cards, then the amount of leaking in a lower ASIC quality card could affect, like I said, crosstalk between components. So a higher ASIC quality at that level might matter. But for you or me or the average guy that's not going on and going out and soldering, you know, custom VRMs and LN2 cooling our stuff, it's really not gonna matter a whole lot. So in conclusion, and hopefully this puts some of this to bed, at least of the thousands of people that have watched this video compared to the millions of people out there that on the forums that are just kind of regurgitating things they've heard and have no idea what they're even talking about is the fact that ASIC quality really has to do with lower temperatures and same performance. Now with GPU Boost 2.0, you might find a card with higher ASIC quality getting a little bit better boost, which tends to lead people to thinking they overclock better simply because lower voltages and lower temperatures would lead GPU Boost to have a little bit more headroom than say a card with lower ASIC quality reaching a lower clock at the same temperature. So there you go, guys. That's pretty much it. I, I hope this has helped. I know this wasn't too fancy of a video, but it was a discussion worth having. And one that I told EVGA I had to have with you guys, just you and me, before we even went into that video, because of the fact that the point of discussion I think is gonna get lost on the performance of this card, and it's gonna be all about the ASIC quality binning. Maybe we'll see more companies doing that in the future. I don't know. But there's no way of knowing what your ASIC quality is going to be uh, even from EVGA, because remember their brackets, it's like 71 to 74 or whatever it might be. 
Uh, when you buy cards from other manufacturers, you never know what you're gonna get. And if you have multiple GPUs like I do, I got lucky with a 72, 73, and 74. If I had had, say, a 67, a 75, and a 79, then I would have had to have overclocked all three of them independently instead of having a, a one overclock applied to all three of them because the voltages and frequencies would have varied between all three of them too drastically with ASIC qualities that far apart. I hope this video has made sense. I hope I didn't confuse you further. I have a tendency of doing that. Sometimes people, they might come up to me and be like, hey Jay, I love your videos. And I'm like, cool, and they wanna chat. And then they ask me about overclocking or something. And then by the time we're done talking, they're like, he said words and stuff. I'm gonna get on out of here, guys. We'll see this review coming soon of the 980 Ti Kingpin Edition. And as always, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.